Hello and welcome back. In our previous video, we wrote the code for our first data frame. Today we will understand a few concepts about data frame columns, data frame rows, data frame schema and we will see few structured transformations such as select, expr, select expr and cast. Now if you are new to the series, I would recommend you to go back and watch our previous video from the playlist. I am in my JupyterLab environment. In our previous video, we saw how to create a Spark session object and we created an employee data frame with the data. Today we will use the same data and we will proceed with our basic structure transformation. Let's generate our Spark session and employee data frame first. Here is the data of our employee data frame. If we go back in our Spark UI, since we call the show action on our employee data frame, we have one query created. Let's validate the schema for the employee data frame we just created. To view the schema, you can type emp.printschema. As you can see, we have defined all the columns as string. So we have all the column names and data type as string. Now, there is one more way in which we can view the schema. For that, you need to write emp.schema. Now, if you see, there is something different that is printed out. Spark basically stores the schema in form of struct type and struct fields. To define a schema, we need to have a list of struct type along with each column as a struct field with the column name and the data type and the nullable field. Let's consider an example. Consider we have a schema string of name with data type string and age of data type integer. Now to write this in Spark's native data type, we need to import struct field, struct type, string type and integer type from PySpark's SQL.types module. Let's import those. Now, to convert this schema string into Spark's native schema, we need struct type as a list. We need to define each column as a struct field along with its data type and the nullable. So, struct field would be for the first column the name and the data type is string and Nullable is true. When we say nullable is true, it implies it can hold null values. For the second field, which is age, we will again define struct field with the column name as age and data type as integer type and nullable as true. Now, in case the value is a non nullable field, then you need to define here as false. Now this is how Spark defines the data type. However, you can also use schema string to define your data frames schema. Spark uses a method to implicitly convert the schema string into the Spark's native data type method. We will see that in the bonus tip for today. A data frame basically consists of two parts. First one is column and second one is cell. Column is similar to that what we have in a spreadsheet or a pandas data frame. We can select, manipulate or remove columns from data frame and these operations are known as expressions. Now, to put expressions on columns, you need to have real value for the column and for that you need rows. And to have rows, you need data frame. And that is why you cannot manipulate individual columns out of data frame. To manipulate a column, you need a data frame. Now, there are many ways in which we can define or refer a column. Let's see few of them. Now, to call a column explicitly, we can use col or expr from pyspark.sql.functions module. Let's see an example. Now, you see this is a column. Again, we can change it to expr if we run, we get the same column. This is because any manipulation done on a column is considered as an expression. 
Now to call a column from a data frame, we can use emp.salary. See, we can call the employee data frame salary. There is one more way in which we can call the salary column from the employee data frame. That is using the brackets. If we run this, see, we get the same column salary from the employee data frame. Now, since we have understood how to call the columns from a data frame, let's go ahead and write our data frames. To make things easier, let's correlate our data frame queries with a SQL query. Consider we need to select few columns from the employee data frame, which are employee ID, name, age, and salary. Consider our output data frame would be emp underscore filtered. Now to select columns, we can write emp dot select. Now we know how to implicitly call the columns. We can use col in bracket. We can put employee ID. We can also call expr and we can also put name. Or we can use emp dot age, emp dot salary. Now, if we run this, nothing happens because select is a transformation. We can go back and refresh. See, nothing happens. Now, to view the data from the data frame, we can call the so action. So, let's call the so action filtered dot show. This is an action and this will trigger a job. Let's run this. See, we have selected only the required columns, employee ID, name, age and salary. Let's go ahead and refresh. See, we have one more so string method, which is an action. Now consider from the created data frame, we need to rename employee ID to EMP ID and we also need to cast the age from string to integer. Let's write our second data frame now. Our emp underscore casted. Since we can write columns as expression, we can write expr and we can directly put the expression. Again, we can call the emp dot name column. Now, again, cast is an expression that we can use. So we can write expr and we can put it as an expression and we can call the salary column we can write emp dot salary let's run this nothing happens as select is a transformation let's view the data awesome we have just renamed our column and we have also casted our age to integer just to verify whether the scheme is properly casted, we can write emp underscore casted dot print scheme. See, age is integer now. So it is very evident that we can use expr to write column expressions. And to explicitly call column, we can use data frame dot column name. Now, Spark provides one more better way. The combination of select and expr in one method called select expr. Let's use that method. From the same employee filtered data frame, we have to rename and cast the data. Let's create one more data frame called emp underscore casted one, which will be our new data frame, and we will use the same filtered data frame. And now we will use select expr in place of select. Now we don't need to explicitly write expr for our expressions. We can directly write our expressions. Consider employee id as emp id. We can write name as a column. We can write cast age as integer as age. And we can also write select salary. Now, if we run this, nothing happens. Let's view the data. See, this is again the same data, but this time in a more neat way. We don't need to call expr explicitly because select expr does the job. 
Now you can also write column names directly inside select. You don't need to call explicit column names emp.salary. You can directly write salary inside select. Now since our casted column is there, let's write a filter statement to filter out age greater than 30. So we can write emp underscore final is equals to emp underscore casted dot select. Now we have already seen column names are basically expressions. So you can call the column names directly inside the select statement. So we can directly write select emp id name age salary. Now to put filter we can write where our expression would be age greater than 30. Now if we run this, nothing happens. This is because again select and where are transformations. To call an action, let's view the data. EMP underscore final dot show. See we have filtered data where all ages are greater than 30. Now we can again write this data in form of CSV which will again be an action. So EMP underscore final dot write dot format which is csv dot now if we go back and refresh you can see all the source strings that we call to view the data and finally the save method in which we are writing the data now bonus tip of the day Now, if you remember our schema string that we used in the previous example, name as string and age as integer, we can use schema string also as a schema rather than writing the Spark native schema. But how does Spark convert this implicitly? There is a method that Spark uses, which is by Spark dot SQL dot type. Now. If we pass this schema string into this method, we will get the native Spark data type. Let's call this. If we run now, see Spark implicitly converts this into the Spark native data type. And this is how Spark automatically handles the schema strings. So you can write either the Spark implicit data type or you can write schema strings directly, Spark will be able to handle those schema automatically. This was the bonus tip for today. In our next video, we are going to see more on basic transformations. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.